title. Uh, this is my amendment I propose, comma, and after a carbon tax election is held so that Canadians and the Quebecois can vote out this tired, comma, out of time, comma, NDP Liberal Coalition government. Okay, yeah, so we have... I'm happy to speak to it, too. <laughs> Thank you. Point of order, Madam Paiba. You made a deal with the devil. Is this in order? Because we, we still had a motion... Yes, any amendment uh, can be brought forward. As a motion. Uh, yeah. and, and it's up to the committee. But this is completely different from the current motion. Some amendment, standing? it can be, members have every right to bring in a sub-amendment. It's up to the but committee. this is not a sub-amendment, Chair. Um, with all due respect, this is not a sub-amendment. It's this amendment to the... A complete different motion from what we are... Point of order. discussing right now. I'm still on my point Okay, order, thank so you. Like and I will give floor to Mr. Kmitch. Uh, Sorry, Chair. I was going to say I hadn't given up my time and it sounded like debate because mm -hmm. this is totally in order. Uh, my motion is basically doing a time delay, which is what the previous uh, amendment, the, the one we're debating right now, and now our seventh amendment. The amendment that uh, Mr. brunet Duset proposed is basically affecting the timing of the main motion. And so what I'm doing is I'm affecting the timing of what would happen when this is reported out of this committee back to the House, which is would only take effect after a carbon tax election is held. Because frankly, what I heard at doors across the country, and I went to the greater Toronto region, I went to Vancouver, I went to Burnaby, North Vancouver, I went to Seymour, I went to all those places, including places outside of Toronto, like Hespler, and that's what I heard at the doors. At least half the doors, people want to talk about the carbon tax and the impact it's having on their bottom line every single month. So what this sub-amendment is simply doing is just time... It's basically establishing when the main motion takes effect. And I think it would be perfectly reasonable for Canadians to have a say and have a say now the way they want it. You can see it in the polls, Chair. I'm sure you follow them like all of the political class does. We all do it. We all check the polls, whether we go on 338 Canada or we're going on to any other websites like Abacus or Leger, and we're checking what the polls are, usually in our writings. I know that I'm sure in, in Surrey, uh, the polls are affected as well, Chair. And we're all checking the polls all the time because we're always wondering what Canadians are thinking. And right now what they're thinking is they'd like a carbon tax election. What they want is for their pocketbooks at the end of the month to be uh, have more money in their pockets. They want to have a lighter load and the carbon tax not being imposed on everything that they purchase at the grocery stores, when they go to the pump to buy gasoline or buy diesel, whenever they're going... Mr. Sorry. Sorry. We have a point of order. Yes, I would like to ask the clerk through you. Is it legal to move a motion when we are debating a motion? Can you illustrate that for us, please? Mr. Elkhori, this is a sub-amendment to the motion. This is not a new motion. Another point of order from Madam Kaibaga. I would like to challenge that because... Um, maybe the clerk can help us. Um, uh, this is a new motion, completely different from what we are talking about. And it's moved as a sub-amendment, but it doesn't match the current motion. And um, it's irrelevant to, to the main motion. And if, if I can read um, just a little bit of the, the, the rules, maybe you can help me with this, um, clerk. It says here that if... If it deals with a matter with uh, with a matter foreign to the main motion, it exceeds its scope thirty or introduces a new proposition, which should properly be the subject of a separate sub substantive motion with notice. I don't think that this this motion that's been moved um, is relevant to the current motion that we're talking about, and it's taking us completely to a different route. So I'd like to challenge um, your chair on that that it's not uh, appropriate. It challenges the uh, the. Point of order before I have the challenge. Sorry, the challenge. The, there is no challenge, Chair, and there is no challenge because you allowed me to commence debate, which means but you accepted the, the ruling. You challenge. accepted my sub amendment to the main motion, which is basically establishing when the main report with this amendment would take effect. That's all I'm doing here. I'm proposing a different condition on the main amendment. You accepted it and allowed me to start debate, which means you can't challenge it after the fact. The moment to challenge would be in the moment that it's proposed, we to eliminate it. That is in the green book. 
Hold on one second. Uh, uh, Before you accepted it, Chair, I did chal- I did make a comment, and you <laughs> sort of moved on from the comment that I made. Right. And so, so, just hold on. I'm going to suspend the meeting for a few, <laughs> a few seconds here before I we come can back. The chair here. Yeah, we can also chal. Sub amendment uh, and floor is with Mr. Kamich. Thank you, Chair. You looked very downcast when you said I still had the floor. <laughs> uh, so to, co- to continue the point uh, I was making before we suspended in order to be able to have the wording of the motion sent to all members of the committee in both official languages, um, I think it's just time. I think uh, this timing on an, uh, a condition on the main amendment, on the main motion, would uh, offer up the opportunity to send this to the House at the appropriate moment. Uh, we've seen over the summer the costs have gone up for a lot of people. I think that um, what I heard at the doors very clearly, both in my writing and also outside my writing when I was door knocking, uh, was that people are just tired of this government and they want to vote it out. They want to have an opportunity to have their say. And I don't see why we should continue to block them from doing that. As uh, the leader of the official opposition has said, the moment that we can, we will move a motion of non-confidence in the government. You'll note I didn't put that into this as a sub-amendment, but that would have been quite the motion to uh, send back to the House of Commons to consider. And uh, very simply, you have many premiers now calling for the end of the carbon tax, including that premier whose party was one of the first in Canada to introduce it, uh, Premier David Eby of... um, British Columbia. And I I went through British Columbia for about two weeks uh, backpacking with my kids through southern British Columbia. And uh, yeah, costs are really high. Uh, That was a complaint I heard again. Many people just complaining it offhand uh, while they were sitting in different restaurants, while they were just walking on the street looking at prices. And now even the premier of British Columbia is calling for an end to the carbon tax, saying that if there wasn't a backstop in uh, the federal legislation, they would do away with it. And the reason he's doing that is very obvious, that there is a provincial election coming in British Columbia, and it's so unpopular that uh, it, he has no chance of being re-elected at this point. And we also, I think, saw a most unusual political situation in British Columbia where <laughs> an entire political party collapsed. Uh, that used to be called the BC Liberals, then it, they did a rebrand that didn't quite work out. And now uh, they have one force that is behind a carbon tax election as well. And that's the wording that they're using as well, because, again, the majority of Canadians want to have want to see the abolishment of the carbon tax because it costs them a lot of money. Back home in Alberta, you're talking about thousands of dollars out of everyone's pocket, regardless of the income quartile that you are in, whether you're in the bottom 20 percent or top 20 percent. Everybody is paying more than used to. And the carbon tax is set to increase April 1st. So I think by sending this. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I am listening intently to make sure that there is no relevancy going on here, but we're not talking about carbon tax, and we are we were originally talking about, uh, you know, lost Canadians, and now we're on carbon tax. Like, what? I, I, I'm so confused. Are we, what, how is this relevant to the current motion? This is relevant to the sub amendment that Mr. Kmich brought in, and Mr. Kmich, floor yours. Mr. Kmich, floor yours. Thank you, Chair. So I, I'm happy to read back the motion. It, so there was the main motion, there was an amendment, and there's my sub amendment. So my sub amendment follows after the addition of the closed work permit study being uh, completed. I added the words, and after a carbon tax election is held so that Canadians and Quebecois can vote out this tired, out-of-time NDP Liberal coalition government. It's very simple. It's germane. I'm speaking to my sub-amendment on what I heard at the doors and what people want us to do as parliamentarians, which is submit ourselves to the greatest bit of accountability our democracy has, which is let Canadians have a say, let them vote us out if they don't think we're doing individually a good enough job in our local writings. And then it's, you know, based on both your political leadership, it's based on your political party, but it's also based on the quality of the representation that you do. What I heard at the doors in my writing of Calgary Shepherd, repeatedly was the costs are too high, the carbon tax is imposing too much of a burden on everyday Canadians. So I think by uh, offering this sub-amendment to the amendment to the main motion, we're just time-limiting when this would go back to the House and the impact it would have on uh, C-71 and the other bits of the legislation. So I think it's time, and I, I hope that uh, the Liberals will see the wisdom in this and submit themselves to accountability and let the Canadian public decide.
Thank you, Mr. Kamich, Mr. Radikov, then Mr. McLean, and then Mr. Dalton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm uh, happy to speak to this this sub amendment, and just just so that we're clear, uh, we have this motion uh, regarding Bill C71, and we have already sub amended it uh, once, and we are looking to sub amend it again. And as my colleague pointed out, it's it it puts essentially a condition on on the um, on what what this motion says, and I think it is also very important based on what I heard this this summer as I spoke with uh, constituents not only in Saskatoon but uh, but in other parts of the country, and I can tell you that th the the carbon tax is very much disliked in Saskatoon. I hear this constantly from people. I hear the the interesting part is that people have have figured out that the the carbon tax is actually the main driver of inflation and the cost of items in the yeah, city of Saskatoon. Okay. Madam Kaibaga, Madam Kaibaga, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I mean, I appreciate that my colleagues started on the right path by talking about C71, which is what we're talking about right now, lost Canadians, and then went back to carbon tax. Again, I fail to see the relevancy here on the main uh, motion and the main matter. That we're Thank you, Madam right Kaibaga. Now. And... Uh, Mr. Radikov, please continue. Okay, um, I understand that it's sometimes difficult, so I'll just I'll just read the motion again, just so that it's very clear. So you know, there's a part in the motion about uh, what we do about C71, and then this part, which would say, and after a carbon tax election is held, so that Canadians and Quebecois can vote out this tired, out of time liberal NDP liberal coalition government. That's that is the sub amendment, and the point of the sub amendment is a timing issue on this motion, and it is to recognize the fact of what I was saying that uh, as I speak to people that they are concerned about the carbon tax and the effect that the carbon tax is having on their costs. And what I find very interesting is that uh, you know it, people are connecting the carbon tax to all of their expenses. And it's not just it connecting it to the price of gasoline or the price of diesel fuel. Uh, it's not even just connecting it to the price of, of uh, natural gas to heat your house or, or heating oil to heat your home. It's People understand how it affects truckers, for example. And truckers pay a lot of money for their carbon tax. Madam Kaibaga, Mr. Chair, again, I go back to the point that Mr. Kimmich is saying that C71 is not important to them. We get that, but, and they don't want it to come it's to the committee, it's but a, we it's want a debate to talk about... And, uh, I'm going to carry on with Mr. Radiko. Mr. Oh, Radiko, please thank go. You. So what I was saying was that people have gone beyond connecting the carbon tax to increase fuel costs, increase home heating costs, but also have recognized that beyond those two things, which are significant, it also has affected truckers, for example, who have to pay significant amounts of carbon tax, which then, of course, is built into every single thing that we buy as Canadians. And so... Everything that we buy that comes on a truck, which is pretty much everything we purchase, is affected by the, the carbon tax and therefore the price is, of course, passed on to consumers because what, what else can you do when you're taxed by the government? At the end of the day, we all know there's only one taxpayer and so all of those increased taxes end up flowing back to that taxpayer. Um, people have also figured out, and I, I get this repeated back to me as well, that the carbon tax has impacted the cost of food in a big way. Because, you know, I've heard examples of farmers. I have one uh, right near Saskatoon that I spoke to that spends $20,000 a month on carbon tax. I've heard other stories from other ridings of farmers that spend in excess of $100,000 a month. And so, once again, where do those costs go? Well, they get passed on to the consumer. And, you know, magically then, the cost of food is, is much more. So, this, these are the kinds of things that I've been hearing in Saskatoon. Now, interestingly... Uh, I did have the opportunity to travel to uh, to the Toronto region in the summer, and as I spoke to voters there, no surprise, I heard the same thing. I heard the same thing in Toronto. In fact, I heard the same thing in Scarborough. I was in Scarborough, and people there were all uh, complaining to me about the cost of living, the cost of food, and they also clearly understood the connection between those increased costs and the carbon tax. And that is why on this motion here today, I think it's important that we tie this motion to the potential of a carbon tax election because even in a place like Scarborough, I heard the same thing. I heard that people are tired. They're tired of the, the wording, again, that, that is in this motion, is tired, out of time, 
NDP liberal coalition government. And those words are, you know, you might just say, well, those are political talking points, conservative talking points. These are words that I heard from constituents, from people. People would tell me this. Point of order, and so it's Point not- of order, Madam Zahid. Uh, thank you, Chair. The, the, this is really irrelevant, like relating it to Scarborough. Like we are talking about lost Canadians. And like what I have been hearing from many constituents for many years is debate. that debate. that right is being taken it's away from those kids, it's those who are born let's, outside. Let's it on. has been a very big issue in our riding of Scarborough Centre. I've been hearing so, from lots so of constituents and I think we need to Jai move quickly. And- on Pardon. that. Madam Jahid, I have the floor, so I will give the floor to Mr. Redikoff. So it's interesting. Um, the, the Scarborough is very much affected by carbon tax and, and many Point of, of order, chair. your constituents. Point of order, chair. Okay. Uh, a chair, like how can we have like a binding motion for the next parliament? Like if after uh, saying it after the election, we cannot give any instructions to the committee uh, coming after the elections. How can we add that in a motion asking for the next election that to do that? Because anything after the election will not. This is the basic point of order. I, I, uh, honorable members, uh, please uh, let. Uh, the conservatives talk because if we want to have a debate, you can raise your hand. I will put you on the on the speaking list. But right now, I have the speaking list: Mr. Redikop, this Mr. McLean, and Mr. Dalton. And I have no one else on the speaking list. Uh, I'll put M- Madam Kaibaga on the speaking list. But until then, please, unless there is a appropriate point of order, please do not debate this motion uh, out of uh, sequence. The list. List, sure. I will add it to you. So now I will read the list again. So we have Mr. Redikop have the floor, Mr. McLean, Mr. Dalton, Madam Kaibaga, and Madam Yahid. Anyone else want to be on the speaking list? If no one, then yes. please, uh, Redik- Mr. Redikop, carry on. Thank you. So back to Scarborough. So we know, I, I spoke to people in Scarborough, and I know this is where the, mem- the member opposite is, is actually from Scarborough, so I know she's heard the same thing, because I didn't have to probe very hard to get this comment from people. And, and the people, not just in Saskatoon, not just in, in the GTA generally, but specifically in Scarborough, uh, Scarborough was, the Scarborough uh, Centre there, were talking about this very issue. And so, I feel... We cannot go into lots concerns we are hearing, like there are a thousand concerns. I have been in Saskatoon and I have heard from caregivers so, about Madam, like Madam, having a new program for the caregivers, so, making sure I'll, that they are I'll heard. The, are you going to keep the mic? Please, the mic should be with me right now. Thank you. Sorry uh, um, about this, uh, honorable members. Uh, I know this is the first day after... Break. We are all energized, uh, uh, but I just please be, please. I will give you that. I'll give you the point of order. But let me finish. I honestly, I tell you right now. You know, I try to do a very fair, you know, uh, equitable job, and uh, so please uh, let me uh, do that and continue to do that. And uh, and if there is a genuine point of order, I always. Always uh, welcome that, but uh, please no debate until you have your turn to speak. Okay, anyone else on a point of order? No point of order, then Mr. Radikov, you have the floor. Please go ahead. Well, clearly Scarborough is a touchy issue, um, but the reality is the carbon tax has impacted Canadians right across the country, which includes Scarborough. And as I said, when I was in Scarborough, I was hearing Point of order. all the time. Chair, about- I've heard from Scarborough constituents a lot. I had a barbecue where there were over 4,000 people, and we have been having conversations Jai, please. on the doors, at events, I think- Taste of Lawrence, Canada Day. Madam Jahid, please. You, you, I have your name on the list. When your turn comes in, you can speak about this. I, I humbly, uh, you know, I request you and that uh, you will follow the direction from the chair. Uh, and, and I would really appreciate that. And, uh, and, and I don't want any more interruption unless, you know, uh, Mr. Redikop is really going off the tangent, which I don't see him yet. And uh, Mr. Redikop, please go ahead. 
So again, we're on the subject of carbon tax, and uh, and I was just talking about, uh, and we know that the carbon tax, the, what we have here, and I'll read it again because this is an, a sub amendment that we have to this motion, and the sub amendment adds these words, and after a carbon tax election is held, so that Canadians and Quebecois can vote out this tired out of time NDP liberal coalition government. That is the sub amendment that we're speaking to. And so, um, you know, I just, I was just talking about Scarborough and how people even in Scarborough, much to the surprise of the member for Scarborough, actually complain about the carbon tax and the way that it's impacting the costs of, of the food that they are eating and, and, uh, the things that they're purchasing and, and just the, the struggling and the suffering that people are feeling where they're, they don't have the money in their bank accounts at the end of the month to pay the bills that they need to pay because uh, one of the reasons is the cost of, of uh, food chain. and other things that have been impacted uh, by uh, carbon It tax. is about relevance to this committee. We are not in an environment committee. We are in Citizenship Immigration Committee and it's important to discuss the immigration cases, uh, immigration issues in this committee rather than we have a committee where like they can look into the carbon tax, but we are right now in same committee and it's important that we talk about the issues which are relevant to same committee. Uh, Jahid, I have called the sub amendment in order and um, Mr. Redikop is speaking on that sub amendment and I don't see that uh, he's, uh, he's, speak, he's, uh, he's he's not speaking out of order so Mr. Redikop, please carry on. So what Canadians have, have told me uh, and why I keep coming back to the carbon tax and why we think it's relevant to add into this motion is the opportunity to have an election based on the carbon tax. That is what people are telling me. I believe that's what Canadians want the opportunity to, to do. Um, my colleague mentioned a very interesting thing. Um, he mentioned, first of all, that many of the provinces are, uh, I, th I think it might be all of them now, are opposed to the carbon tax. But most specifically and most interestingly, British Columbia, and I just want to I just want to highlight that point because British Columbia was really the birthplace of the carbon tax. It's where it first started, where it was first implemented. And it's it's so interesting how right now... From Madam Kaibaga, please uh, go ahead. Uh, sure. I'm, uh, I have five and a, uh, almost seven minutes uh, to uh, finish, finish this uh, committee. Yes, and uh, I called the point Madam order. Kaibaga, please uh, go ahead. I, I, I go back to the point that this sub-amendment is out of order because it seeks to, to direct a future committee to report on something that the House and you cannot bind in a, in a future parliament. This makes no sense. We're sitting here discussing Bill C-71 and you're entertaining a motion to direct a future Ma parliament, Ma something that you yourself cannot do as chair, Mr. Chair, Ma uh, respectfully. Madam, Madam Kaibaga, How do we continue this debate? Madam Kaibaga, committee is in control of its own things and 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 it does not we do not direct the parliament what to do at this point a future in time. parliament like and uh, and uh, let me uh, if you if some of the members do not like you know what is in the in the or do not support what is in the in the sub amendment they can vote it down when that the the debate collapses so right now uh, i have 6 minutes uh, mr radikov the floor is still with you unless uh, you know you want to bring only wait can end is <laughs> the adjournment from Mr. I have, I have more to say. I'm okay. Say. Continue. I, I just want. I know this seems like a very touchy issue to the members across from me, but I just want to remind them that uh, it wasn't that long ago, back in June, when um, there were members on your side, Mr. Chang, particularly, was was telling us great stories. And I recall a, a, a wonderful story, uh, not a wonderful story, an interesting story about a car accident, right? Yeah. And uh, and I'm still a little confused as to how he didn't inform his wife about that. In a, in a timely manner, and I'm 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 still how I'm confused how you didn't get into trouble for that. So I I'm, I think I might need some marital advice from you because it seems like you 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 cracked the code there somehow. But anyway, my point is that when when all of that was going on and it went on and on and on, um, we didn't disrupt Mr. Chang. We let him speak and tell his story, and so so yeah, we yeah, were actually are concerned. About, so you know, I, I think. We gave you that courtesy. So, um, you know, I, I was speaking about British Columbia and, and, and the carbon tax and how 
uh, how interesting it is to me that that the birthplace of the carbon tax in Canada actually has now said that they would rather do something different. They have recognized that the carbon tax is actually a problem. It's it's a little ironic because it. As we all know, there's an election happening in British Columbia, and so um, it's ironic that the, the the NDP no less would would suggest that the carbon tax is a bad thing. So, so it it proves a couple things. It proves that the carbon tax is in fact a very bad tax. It costs it costs everybody a lot of money and makes life very expensive, makes everything unaffordable, and it actually doesn't help the environment. And I think it also, uh, we can learn from that, that people actually can learn and evolve on their on their thinking. And so I, I, I'm encouraged, I guess, that, that even an NDP uh, premier and NDP government can actually see the light and understand that maybe, maybe there are other ways to accomplish things and that sometimes... Uh, you know, you get your head so buried in one particular issue that you forget about that. And so that's what the carbon tax has become for for the NDP. It's become a liability, it's become a huge liability. And so so that's, I just find that interesting. And so that's, I think, why in, in many places across Canada, uh, every, I think every province now and pretty much uh, anywhere you go to speak, you will find many people who are very much uh, struggling with the carbon tax and very interested in having a say in having a chance to speak to it uh, through an election to tell the government of Canada what they think about a carbon tax. And uh, I'm pretty confident that I, I know the answer to that question, but the only way to know for sure is to have a carbon tax election. And so that's why we have this motion that we add to this, or this uh, sub-amendment, I'm sorry, that we would add to this motion that would say uh, to, to report this to the House after a carbon tax election is held so that Canadians and Quebecois can vote out this tired, out of time NDP Liberal coalition government. And this is, as I said, this is what I'm hearing from people and this is what people are, are wanting to see. And so um, with that, uh, I will end my time and uh, we can move on to the next speaker on the list. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McLean, go ahead, please. You have about three minutes right now before that either we won't suspend be the meeting or... Let's see what I have to say about this. And I support this motion very much. This Pardon me, the sub-amendment to the motion that's on the table here. I think that anybody that hasn't, you know, that hasn't paid attention to the fact that Canadians want an election on the carbon tax at this point in time has clearly not paid attention to the constituents all summer long. Uh, being out there, I, I can guarantee I've been in numerous fairs and it is no longer anything about the issues. It's can you please get rid of these people who are making life more expensive, primarily through the carbon tax? Uh, and I don't, I challenge my liberal colleagues across the table, as long as my NDP colleagues, like, are you actually this tone deaf that you don't want to put this in front of Canadians and continue to keep your feet in the sand and pretend that this is not the major issue facing Canadians today and that they actually want to have a say in how they're paying these taxes? Uh, and, you know, we've had the parliamentary budget officer here give clear indications that the government is misleading Canadians for a long time now about how much this tax is actually costing them. And that's where a political price is going to be paid. That's one of the reasons Canadians are fed up. If you told Canadians that this is what this tax is costing you, this is how much inflation it is costing you, this is what it's doing to your buying power as far as what you can buy in groceries, what you can buy in everything else that's supplied in society because everything has a carbon footprint. Then they would accept that as being honest and being forward-looking as far as what they can do to help the environment. But they have been completely misled, and now Canadians across the country are well aware of that. They know that they've been misled about the cost of this carbon tax, and they see it in the price of everything, the inflation that's gone up, the mounting deficits that this government is running, and they definitely want their say on that. And their say in a democracy happens in an election. I know I people are pounding the pavement in Calgary Centre saying, please do something to stop this government from moving forward any further on this. The tone deafness of this government is beyond the pale. Uh, and I think that this motion, the sub-amendment to the motion, Mr. Chair, exemplifies that very clearly. Let's get to an election on this issue because you cannot continue to divide Canadians around other issues when this is the major issue facing them, their pocketbooks, their families, their jobs, 
their lifestyles, their homes, their food for so long now. Can we please move forward and actually get this sub-amendment passed so that we can deal with this in a proper way, an election for all Canadians? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. McLean. I have uh, one more minute. No, the the floor I'm going to give it to is uh, Mr. Dalton. Thank you very much, Chair. And as a member from British Columbia, as you are also, can't express the in a sufficient way the I would guess the the pain uh, that British Columbians are feeling. Um, economically, and they're feeling it from all sides. They're feeling it with the housing costs, they're feeling it with taxation, they're feeling it. But the carbon tax really just highlights it, and, and it's like a, the tip of a tip of the spear. And point the point down, Mr. President. Well, it's really unfortunate because uh, this is a very important file for me personally. It doesn't apply to Quebec, but it's 5.30. Thank you. Um, uh, it's you know, consent to Mr. Le allow Mr. Dalton to finish, please. Uh, Mr. Dalton, uh, I'm going to uh, suspend the meeting or, unless you want to bring a motion to adjourn the meeting because the floor is with you. Yes, we adjourn the meeting. Adjourn the, there is a motion to adjourn the meeting. Okay. All in favor? Wait.